Morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Akshay Jain, graduate student at the Electrical Engineering Department, University of Florida. And uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, ways to enhance spectral efficiency for um, future wireless networks. And uh, for that, I'm going to focus more on the multi-user, multi-channel MIMO FTM scenario. Um, I'll be touching upon the basics to uh, uh, basics. Uh, which will be useful for studying enhancement of spectral efficiency and I'll be presenting results for the same. So um, let's jump into our uh, session and the session flow. So the session flow deals with the motivation. We need the motivation to study this problem. I want to like bring up like why I was motivated to, you know, pursue this project and uh, pursue this line of uh, study and uh, I'll be bringing up that. The next is orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, or FDM, which is pretty prevalent in today's um, uh, wireless communication standard. Wi-Fi, 4G LTE, you name it, and you've, I know FDM is there. So it's really important that we study that first because it provides uh, some uh, diversity in terms of like enhancing the data rates. Uh, the next is MIMO systems. MIMO systems, again, provides diversity. I'll talk about what kind of diversity and uh, MIMO OFDM together. And then I move on to the space-time block codes, which provide an enhancement to the MIMO systems to transfer data reliably over the network. Uh, moving ahead, I provide the results and inferences for the experiments that I've performed. And uh, these will basically present to you like which of these uh, three lines of ba three basic fundamentals, uh, uh, you know, what kind of performance they provide you. And the last part is the spectral efficiency enhancement strategy. So uh, that is a, a build, uh, that is built upon all these basics which I'm going to discuss so far. So uh, moving forward, the motivation. Uh, so we all have requirements for data. We all use 4G LTE. We all use Wi-Fi. Um, and, and we need high-speed data. So the a study performed showed that the requirement for data is going to go up by a thousand times. And at the same time, we want faster data rates. Okay. So faster data rates in gigabits per second, it, the current networks cannot just support them. And so that's why uh, research into 5G wireless and millimeter wave wireless is so uh, so intense right now because that is the next generation of wireless services which is going to provide us with all of that and as i touched upon the infrastructure cannot just support it and the fragmented bandwidth allocation so shannon's capacity says that c is equal to capacity is equal to bandwidth times log base to one plus snr so uh Contiguous band allocation is always necessary, both from the hardware point of view as well as from the point of view of like how much bandwidth do I have to transfer that uh, transfer such high amount of data at a fast uh, at a fast data rate. So uh, always, almost always, the current wireless techniques are restricted due to this fragment bandwidth allocation. And so uh, moving to the millimeter wave wireless band, uh, you've got free spaces, ample free space, and there can be contiguous band allocation, which can allow for simpler hardware strategies and um, as well as uh, higher capacities. And the spectral efficiency, which is um, in simpler terms, it can be said as how efficiently a network utilizes its uh, frequency spectrum. And currently it stands at two bits per second per hertz, but the aim is to increase it by 10 times, and that requires some serious amount of research into how we can develop strategies which can help enhance the spectral efficiency. Moving ahead, uh, we jump into the orthogonal frequency division multiplexing part. So it's used in Wi-Fi, fourth generation wireless technology. It's it's a wide band uh, it's a wide band strategy, but it's more of an amalgamation of wide band and narrow band techniques. So what uh, so this Technique is, uh, as we all know, that we have faster data rates as compared to 3G technology. So it provides enhanced data rates, and it uses the concept of multi-carrier transmission. So you'll just see uh, in the next in the next few slides that how we can term it as a multi-carrier transmission and how it turns out to be an amalgamation of wideband and narrowband techniques. So uh, firstly, um, let's look at how we can do OFDM. We can perform OFDM. So Moving from the top, 
top left of our uh, diagram uh, we start with the bits these we start with the data uh, d0 d1 d2 and it goes to a serial to parallel converter so we now have n parallel streams the parallel streams then go into a constellation mapper. So constellation mapper is basically baseband modulation here. So we have our baseband data. We model it uh, using a binary phase shift king or a quadrature phase shift king or uh, Q, uh, QAM. Uh, after uh, we modulate our symbols, uh, what we do is we pass them into onto an IFFT block. The IFFT block basically does an IFFT operation, but in a sense, it is modulating each of these symbols onto orthogonal carriers. Because if you look at the bases of uh, the IFFT, uh, each of those bases is uh, uh, is a separate frequency, and each separate. And as you know, uh, when you have sines and cosines with uh, different arguments, they are orthogonal to each other. So the orthogonality principle stands and uh, IF50 basically modulates each of these uh, symbols onto an orthogonal carrier. Now, due to parallel streams, uh, the data symbol length is very long uh, and we use a cyclic prefix as a guard band and this helps to mitigate the ISI problem. So OFTM becomes reliable to ISI. It has orthogonal carriers, parallel streams, and we all club it together from the p parallel to serial converter. After it passes through the channel, you do a reverse operation. You do a serial to parallel. We delete the cyclic prefix. We perform an IF50 to get back our data symbols. And we do an equalization operation. So equalization is necessary to counter the effects which are introduced by the channel. And then after the equalization, we take it to the demodulator. The demodulator demodulates the symbol to S0 hat, S1 hat, S N minus 1 hat, and then we again uh, multiplex it together to get back our stream D0 hat, D1 hat, etc. So this is a very simple operation. It's just important to realize that when we are doing IFFT, uh, different um, frequency domain, uh, different frequency domain symbols uh, have different frequencies, and they are um, in a sense. Um, I mean, if you look at the formula for IFFT, it's uh, summation n is equal to zero to n minus one x of k e to the j 2 pi f k or tap in uh, times small n, then you realize that these are orthogonal bases and basically you're trying to modulate them. Uh, you, you're trying to embed your symbols into those orthogonal bases and then transmit them. So, um, and, and it's pretty visible from here that uh, these are orthogonal subcarriers. Each of these signs is orthogonal signs and cosines. They are orthogonal to each other. So you have um, over here, you have these uh, orthogonal subcarriers right here. And uh, <clears throat> these uh, are like uh, long symbols in time, uh, in time because we parallelize them and then we just club them together to create one OFTM symbol which can be seen right here in the time domain. So this is one OFTM symbol clubbed together in the time domain and sent through and that's how we uh, generate our OFTM. So I50 takes you to the time domain and F50 takes you back to the frequency domain. It's just a way of visualizing but in essence you're mm, doing like you're, you're mo modulating your, each of your data symbol on uh, orthogonal carrier. Now, OFDM is a multi-carrier transmission. As you can see, each uh, each symbol has multiple carriers, and um, it's a multi-carrier transmission. We'll look at the advantages that it provides further, but uh, basically, you can transfer your data on multiple channels all together uh, on like multiple frequencies all together and uh, that way you can enhance your data it's because it is it is immune to frequency selective fading uh, it's, it's important to mention here because what happens is frequency selective fading uh, just renders a couple of frequency subcarriers into deep fade but the rest of the subcarriers can still be uh, in pretty good condition so what you can do is you can have multiple carriers and if you have uh, knowledge of your channel you can just not transmit enough data on those carriers which are on or uh, in deep fades and you can instead transmit more data on the other subcarriers these are some of the adaptive strategies that one can come up with uh, depending on the complexity of the system you want to you want to introduce 
Next, uh, we move on to the multiple input, multiple output systems. Uh, <clears throat> this is a part of the 4G standard and it provides multiple antenna and uh, multi-channel transmission. So, uh, OFTM provided multi-carrier, so you have various carriers you can transmit on. You can all together transmit a lot of data together on a single frequency band on e e with each narrow band, uh, uh, each narrow band channel having different data symbols on them. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, but multi-antenna systems, they provide you multiple channels. So it's a physically different channel over here. Physically, you have multiple antennas on just one system, and they can transmit either the same data or different data, depending upon how uh, you want to use them. And when coupled with OFDM, they can provide enhanced data rates. So this is a typical uh, MIMO system. You have a transmitter here. You have multiple antennas, say M antennas. You have a receiver here and you have n antennas so let's consider each of these ante antennas to be <coughs> uh, uh, to be omnidirectional so uh, it transmits in all direction <coughs> so what happens is uh, h11 h21 hnm they represent the <coughs> Uh, channels, uh, the channel properties between uh, antenna 1 to antenna 1 is H11. It's it's like a, uh, the impulse response of the channel. H21 represents the characteristics from 1 to 2 and so on and so forth and NM between M and N. So being omnidirectional means that not only does receiver 1 receive its signal from, from antenna 1, but it receives from 2, 3, 4 and up to M. So, so <clears throat> Receiver 1 not only has its signal of interest, but it also has interferences from um, other antennas. So this is a problem, and uh, we will touch upon this when we go to the results. But this is how the multiple input, multiple output systems are designed. And if you have omnidirectional antennas, you can have a lot of interference. The other thing is, if you have a MISO system, which is multiple input, single output, you can do beam forming. So beam forming basically generates uh, you know, phase shifted uh, copies of the signal on each of these M antennas, M antennas, and say we had just receiver one, uh, antenna one, and they will have phase shifted copies such that all of these uh, transmissions from these antennas formed a constructive interference on uh, the receiver one, on, on antenna one. So that's another strategy, but for multiple input, multiple output, we'll uh, look at like how the performance varies without channel orthogonality and by introducing channel orthogonality. So as I was talking, um, here you have um, no orthogonality between channels. That means the reception at receiver uh, at antenna 1 is not independent of the transmissions from uh, antenna 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and M up to M. So it's necessary to orthogonalize these channels. In a way, we want to decouple uh, the transmissions from 2 to 1, uh, from 1 to 1, from the transmissions from 2 to 1 and up to M to 1. So uh, a strategy which was devised uh, basically by Alamoti in uh, 1998 is uh, space-time block codes, and it's a channel orthogonalization process, as I would term it. Uh, it removes the multiple axis interference due to the coupling effect, the coupling effect being transmissions from 2 to 1, M to 1, etc. And there are two methods, Alamuti and another is single value decomposition process, which we just studied a couple of days back in the class. So, um, so Alamuti STBC. So uh, the in in incoming symbols uh, say they are S1, S2, S3 up to Sn, and we consider a uh, 2 by 2 MIMO. Or a much simpler strategy would be to consider a, a, a 2 by 1 MIMO, where you have two transmitters, uh, two transmit antennas, and one receive antenna, but it doesn't matter. So uh, in the first time slot, Alamuti says that we transmit um, S1 from antenna 1 and S2 from antenna 2. And in the second time slot, we transmit minus S2 star from antenna 1 and S1 star, so star representing uh, conjugate. Uh, so complex conjugate, so from the two antennas. So upon receiving and when you do processing, um, mainly what Alamuti took was a two by one system. Uh, you could uh, get a result which is equivalent to a maximum ratio, maximal ratio combining result. So uh, in simpler terms, the channels are orthogonalized and it's just a weighted sum. 
So the more uh, and transmit antennas you had, you would get a much better result because the um, because you are doing a weighted sum and you are in essence increasing your SNR of the system. And it is a rate one code, so two time slots and you send two symbols and you are able to send two symbols. So it's a rate one code. So it's a pretty efficient code. You're using a rate one code and you're able to get a maximum ratio combining result, which is a, a very optimal result. The SVD method, it's uh, so this is a, another way of orthogonalizing the channels. Uh, basically, it it's, it's a rather simple mechanism in mathematical terms, but it requires the channel state information at both the transmitter and the receiver. And to obtain the channel state information, it can introduce large latencies and because you want to send, uh, you, you'd be sending some data and uh, with pilot symbols, so the receiver would estimate the uh, channel and then the receiver would have to send that information back to the transmitter that, hey, this is the channel and this is how you have to look at it. And that's how you come up with it. So basically both the transmitter and receiver have the channel matrix and then you perform an SVD and by mathematical manipulation, you can obtain a channel which is orthogonal in nature in the space of the SVD. Uh, so in the space of the singular uh, vectors which you have. So if you have uh, channel matrix H and if its singular value decomposition is UVD, uh, UDV uh, V uh, dagger, then uh, in the space of the uh, the uh, in the space of the column in the column space of the matrix U and V, you would have uh, uh, orthogonal channels. So that's how you can view this. So you're basically introducing rotations to take it to a space where the channels become orthogonal. So um, with all of this, um, it's important that we look at some results. This is the theoretical uh, theoretical background you have, and uh, we now look at the results. So the first result we look at is the MIMO OFDM. So basically what I did was I simulated, uh, I, I generated a BER versus SNR plot, um, and I simulated a 2 by 2 MIMO and a 4 by 4 MIMO and implemented OFDM also in the system. So you can see there's not a lot of difference in the BER. It's almost similar, just a slight improvement in 4 by 4 MIMO, but not significant. And this is without space-time block coding. So the problem is there is interference. And that is where you're not getting a significant improvement in the 4x4 MIMO. So the interference comes into play here. And this becomes very apparent when I introduce the 8x8 MIMO. See, the 8x8 MIMO, which is the black star uh, plot, it actually has a higher error rate. Now, this is because we have seven interfering antennas with the one and uh, with, uh, say, if one is transmitting, if antenna one transmits to an, uh, antenna one on the receiver, the antennas 2 to 8, they're interfering with the signal from antenna 1. So that is an issue. That becomes an issue. So we need channel orthogonalization process here. And so this was just to, this is for uncoded OFDM MIMO. So uncoded meaning no space-time block codes. It does not refer to any kind of channel coding techniques, etc. It's just regarding space-time block codes. So when I introduce the space-time block codes, you can see the improvement, the drastic improvement. The blue line shows 2 by 2 MIMO FDM without space-time block codes, and uh, the black line shows the 2 by 2 MIMO FDM with space-time block codes. So there is a significant improvement by channel orthogonalization. So it shows how important space-time block codes are to introduce into MIMO systems to have reliable communications. And this is again a BR versus SNR plot, and you can see at 35 dB, the error is almost uh, 10 to the minus 5, but for uh, without a space-time block code, it's still in the order of 10 to the minus 1. So it's it's pretty uh, significant in terms of improvement. And you can see that with space-time block codes, there is a diversity gain which is obtained. 4 by 4 MIMO outperforms significantly the 2 by 2 MIMO. So you can see that how important space-time block codes are. You introduce more, because the point is, with 4 by 4 MIMO, you have a maximal ratio combining result with four antennas. So you're summing up uh, four copies of the same signal and you're averaging out noise even further. So you have a higher SNR as compared to 2 by 2 MIMO, which can only combine two copies of the signal. 
So that's why you have a better results with space time block codes. And th that is why the importance It's really interesting to read the results, which you get the proof of getting uh, the maximal ratio combining results after you, after you churn through the equations. And so with this, I uh, move on to the, <clears throat> the spectral efficiency enhancement strategies. And I'd like to talk a bit over here. So, all of this was a basis to show that how efficient MIMO, OFDM, and space-time block codes can be to provide a very good performance on, like, uh, 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 to provide improved performances. So, with multi-carrier configurations, you have OFDM to look into, and you can transmit parallel streams of data virtually together with a high uh, reliability index. With MIMO, again, using spatial multiplexing techniques wherein each antenna transmits a different data stream, you can again achieve a higher degree, a, a, a higher uh, data rate. So, <clears throat> in a sense, sending, sending different data streams on uh, from multiple antennas as well as on multiple carriers, you can uh, in increase your data rate a lot more. And the last, but a very, very unique concept is multi-user configuration. It's about, let's say, we have 100 users in a system. Now, at one time instant, not all 100 users are going to have uh, the same kind of channel quality. Some are going to have it bad, some are going to have it really nice. So it's important that by using channel state information uh, and MAC layer processing, you are able to choose between whom to transmit and whom not to. And by choosing whom to transmit, you can pump through a lot of data uh, to those users, depending on the requirements, of course, but you can pump the data at a high rate, data rate to those users. And when the channel becomes good for the others, you start providing them high data rates as well. So these are some of the spectral and efficiency enhancement strategies that I have in mind. And uh, uh, I'll be presenting some more results in the future work because this is a good direction of research. And um, thank you. Um, I hope that was really informative. Um, I provided some results for MIMO, MIMO, FDM. If you have, if you don't have space-time block codes, how they perform. If you have space-time block codes, what is their effect? And this is like a building block to 5G wireless. Thank you. Have a great day. And um, before um, I finish off, I want to show um, some simulations uh, on MATLAB. Uh, sorry for that. Um, yeah, so um, here is my code. Uh, uh, here is my code uh, on MIMO FDM. Uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is a QPSK modulator, demodulator. You have uh, pilot symbols over here. And I set up uh, the, num the antennas, uh, number of antennas over here, TXRX antennas. And this just selects the pilot symbols which you need. So we need it for channel estimation as we, uh, as we saw in the equalizer process on the receiver. This is the OFDM demodulator modulator and uh, so on and so forth. So uh, here we go. It's running. Basically, um, we have a thousand frames, and so it's it's going to take some while. It's going to take a while to run and produce the output. It's busy, as you can see. So there you go. Um, that's just for one uh, one of the results, and you can see it's uh, it's for two by two MIMO, and uh, <clears throat> uh, I've generated the title and but this is the BR axis, this is the SNR axis, and uh, if we want to see, and this is the space time block code uh, which we have introduced, and again uh, we have introduced the space time block coding with MIMO channel, no Doppler shift. And uh, <clears throat> simulate the results. Uh, just a second. I need to change this index to two, and just so that it runs quickly. There we go. Oh, 
will take some time to run because it has to run through a 2x2 and a 4x4. And these are all the objects which I have created. This is the AWGN channel, MIMO channel. You can use all of these objects. It's a communication toolbox is really powerful in MATLAB 2014, and you can really use this. And uh, it's, a, it's a really useful tool, and uh, it's worth understanding what they give in the MATLAB communication toolbox. So I think that's for 2x2 MIMO. <coughs> Sorry. As you can see, it takes a little longer for 4x4 MIMO. So you can see here, we've already seen these plots. It says zero from zero errors. So basically, as you keep going forward beyond this point, it just does not register any error. So probably if we can have a higher floating point number, we can still register some points uh, below this, but shows the significant improvement. The red one is, again, 4x4 MIMO. The, the blue one is a 2x2 MIMO. So just showing you how the simulation works. I've shown you the code. Um, you can find the codes in my uh, submission. And um, it's it's a pretty good uh, uh, pretty good implementation that MATLAB gives you, uh, the, the tools that MATLAB communication toolbox gives you to run through all of these steps. And um, this is pretty much it. And uh, I hope you, you, it was uh, useful. And uh, I look forward to hearing some comments on the same. Thank you.